Quand il me prend dans ses bras This is what fans of Sophie Millman pay to hear. Je vois la vie en and this is what she does to keep singing after losing her voice due to vocal cord damage. It's actually better. Better than it was four days ago. In the exam room of Dr. Jennifer Anderson, the jazz singer's vocal cords are getting a checkup. Anderson is one of a handful of doctors in Canada who specialize in vocal cord surgery. With a special camera, she looks to see whether the swelling has gone down. That's the right vocal cord. This is the left vocal cord. And what we've been tracking... Anderson shows us footage of Millman from last May when she was struggling. Look closely on the left cord. This little bump was the beginning of a polyp. So and that is the swelling a, of the vocal cord. It's a swelling. It's like an early polyp. To take the swelling down, brace yourself. Anderson injected a steroid. So there you go, two drops of steroid right into the polyp. It may seem drastic, but Millman isn't alone. Celine Dion, Shakira, Shania Twain, Adele, and Sam Smith all canceled concerts and even tours due to vocal cord issues driven by increasing demands on performers. Promoters and presenters and agents, they don't care that much about fatigue and things. I mean, I go to Japan, I play two shows a night, night after night after night, jet lag. Flashback to the year 2000, album sales were the music industry's biggest source of revenue. Now, with the shift to digital music, it's live concerts. Whether it's Beyonce, Guns N' Roses, or Bruce Springsteen, in 2016, the bulk of their revenue came from concerts and touring. But besides the business, the other factor in vocal cord strain is the big voice singing style. If you put too much tension, too much muscle tension on your vocal cords, then you end up with vocal cord swelling. And it's often reversible, so you might do that one night and the next few bit husky and it goes away. But as you repeat that, then you end up with vocal cord swelling that's not reversible in a short time. The voice starts to change. Okay. We hold a lot of tension, and the tension from the back uh -huh. of the neck goes into the vocal cord area. When singers start losing their voice, they may end up at Elaine Overholt's piano. Many performers are thrust out into the world um, with no training, no even idea how to warm up, no set of skills. She says it's better to build up stamina rather than go under the knife. You don't want to have surgery if possible because it can, not always, but it can alter the voice. Overholt tells students to conserve their voice. Not an easy job for a musician on the road. When I get on stage, I sort of, I let it all go and I want to please the audience, I want to make them happy. So I will push and do everything I can to make them happy and to in the moment. And then I pay for it. Caught between performing and protecting their most delicate instrument. Eli Glasner, CBC News, Toronto. Well, Freddie Mercury refused to have nodules removed, fearing permanent vocal damage. Some singers embrace the raspy sound that can follow surgery, like Bonnie Tyler and this guy. Now she's in me, always with me. Tiny dancer in my hand. So we actually showed you this a few days ago, Elton John in his early career years before his surgery in 1987 to remove nine growths he has that are now called cancerous. How's this for comparison? You can tell everybody that to your song it may be quite simple, but What a difference, deeper, richer, and according to the man himself, better. Some fans have told him they miss his falsetto. Elton John says he still sings his songs in the original key. His voice is just more resonant. 